Windrun and Shackle. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty terrifying. I, can you even play it? Like, do you have to switch Wind Ranger to position four at this point? Like, I feel like it almost feels unplayable. We'll have to see. You may now select your heroes. Oh, they're switching it up. They're going to run a Pugna last pick. <laughs> All right. Be, I think it's going to be Pugna, Pugna on Thompson again. I think it's going to be 2 0 is what I think it's going to be. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Look at this freaking game. <laughs> they're still. The hell? Oh, God. Yeah, Secret are like, we're good to go. OG is on us saying, I know I'm playing PA. You guys figure it out. Jerex is trying to do it as well. I'm this is a rough shaker, one. guys. Screw you. Exactly. Aye. They're thinking, man. OG. X Dream Green. Can't decide which green hero to pick. Right? I mean, that's the thing, right? Is, so they are going to do Tops and Windranger, and it's going to be a Seb Pugna. Hmm. <clears throat> this is a tough one. I, I really don't know what they're going to do. Like, it feels like they have to shut Nisha down. That's, like, the most important thing. Cause... I, don't, I don't like this. Pugna no. has the last pick. They're so squishy. Everyone on their side, low HP. Jerex is probably the tankiest one. You're playing against Clockwork, Monkey King, Morphling. It, ooh. I don't know. I, I have to see. Maybe this Thompson Wind Ranger can, uh, can make something happen in this game, but uh, I, I'm not sure. Wind Ranger is one of those heroes where she needs another item always. Like, okay, I got this. Uh, probably four staff in this game so she can get out of position yeah. okay i need maelstrom to deal damage and i need a bkb to survive and uh, then you need a aghanim scepter because you're not dealing enough damage you're not using your ulti yeah well back when wind ranger was like really picked consistently it was like the ags into a like a chrysalis build so that way you would have a lot of damage but then the reason it stopped was exactly what you're talking about it's like you need that bkb on top of it to stay alive in this game like, I mean, even if he gets a four staff early, I think he just dies to the morph lane. And Ana is going to immediately tip off Thompson saying, all right, guys, you got this. I believe in you. The mass tips. I'm not sure exactly what's what's going on in the discussions, but uh, they're just they're feeling good about it. They're like, all right, we're going to go out here. We're going to play some Dota. We'll see what happens. That's one of the problems with the hero. It feels like you never have enough items. You're, you're never ready to fight. Well, we'll see. Game two online. Secret looking to close this one out 2 0. And OG feel like they're, you know, just they're just spamming the chat wheels. They're feeling maybe a little bit better about their prospects than we're giving them credit for. Um, but we'll see if they have what it takes. As No Tail is just going to micro some treants, run them around the area here, see what we can find. It looks like they are going to run into the morph lane up on the high ground. Doesn't want to reveal himself, although I think that they have a good idea that it's Nisha playing it in the mid lane. And I love that they put Clockwork on core this game. Zai is playing it, get the items and farm on Clockwork, which they're going to benefit way more than if Magnus gets. Yeah. This is what you were talking about before, right? You just have the, you know, Yapsor following around the Monkey King and he can keep empowering him the whole time. Yeah, this and is likely not, empower himself. This is not Yapsor's uh, hero. Uh, it's nothing too greedy, but uh, position 4 Magnus does mag job way better than position 3 Magnus, just empowering your two cores. Right. Well, Nisha in the mid lane. Misses his block. Already they're crumbling. They can't handle it. And Topson misses his block too, so nothing. <laughs> Never mind. We're fine. Everything is fine. Mistakes were made. Rocket Flare, level 1, 80 damage to secure some last hit harassment uh, on the tree and on top of it. Nice. And he's going to try and clear through those. Does have the Stout Shield, which is one of the nice parts about it, but still running into some issues. There's a lot of pressure being put on by No-Tail here. Able to micro back that one trant so it doesn't take too much damage and then pull the rest of them away as well. So top lane, it is going to be continuing to have Seb on uh, this Pugna. 
Looks like the lane is going to push in, but this is a frustrating matchup here. Immediately going to give him the tip after where he misses the CS, and well, we'll see if those Mid tips lane, get exchanged. Mid lane, we might have a first blood. Ooh. Man, the skin of his teeth is out of there. Nisha playing this one close. He's just going to salve in front of Fire Topson. Shot. We'll see if Topson can break it. He's thinking about it. Well, it looks like he's not giving it to him. So yeah, they're gonna back out afterwards. Oh no, Nisha. Nisha looks to still be okay for the moment. Knows how much damage this power shot can do. He's healing back up from it afterwards. Nisha, what what you doing, buddy? He has the tango. That's it. All right. The problem the is he out. can't use flask. He needs to run back so far away so the twin ranger can see him to use the flask efficiently. Otherwise, he's just gonna oh get, get it canceled. Oh, <laughs> try to snipe him mid air. He didn't even have uh, that. He didn't even have waveform uh, skilled when he went for it there. Ana looks like he's in some trouble down bottom though. Puppy getting the harassment off, and he will be able to regen through it, popping that sick charge afterwards. So. The Jakiro putting the pressure on, and so far so good in these two lanes. Topson and Windranger, uh, or rather, and Seb, both having a good time. Fisher ready in four seconds. Looking for it. Nisha in some trouble there, buddy. Hanging on for the moment, but they draw first blood. Topson, redemption. Already has more kills than he had last game. Yeah, he, he could have actually scored first blood two times if he connected the power shot. Shaker already used one Fisher, stayed uh, for a second one. And yeah. that's position for Magnus, which means that uh, he can leave Pagna alone. They don't really threaten a kill on him unless they get a skewer onto the tower. Yeah, it's not an easy one to find, that's for sure. Thompson back towards mid again. He does not have enough mana for a power shot right now. Still nine away, but he's laying in a good amount of harassment here on Anisha, who keeps on trying to toggle back and forth with strength to stay alive. But we can see that already this Wind Ranger having a much better time of it. And across the board, they're having uh, significantly better CS. Thompson, maybe you can try and go for a bait. Uh, Although, trading hits now with Nisha. He needs to be careful. He actually cancels the animation. Realizes he doesn't have the mana for it. And Jarek's moving into position. Seeing if he can find a Fissure. Not going to happen. So, it's going to be the bottle brought out for Topson. And he's going to maybe go fishing for a power shot. Or just retreat afterwards. And they're actually going to hold the creep wave here, even. That's Nisha. really cool. Still not using that flask. No. It does it. 7-7 seven, seven against... 14. Thompson is playing really aggressive, which means he's uh, missing a lot of uh, CS because of it. Look at Nisha denying so much. Yeah. It's extra harassment out there. But I guess Thompson is just comfortable just sort of getting the uh, levels. Puppy gets the deny here or gets the arcane rune, actually. I think he'd be able to pick it up. So a thousand gold lead early on for OG. Man, Nisha is playing so well. Even with the, the bad start that he had. Power shot. No, he's not going to go for it. Two points in attribute shift. Uh, more than enough to keep him alive. He needs to bring a lot of region to this lane. No. Uh oh. Jerex. Chased down by mid one. No tail. They need to share okay? some damage. Yeah, seeing if they can do it. Ana slows down. Oh, and that's enough. Does not want to sprout in his buddy, though. And no tail. Will it get the sprout? Ana trading hit still hanging on. That blink strike is going to need to use it to jump away here. And it looks like they will find the kill on a no tail. Ana also able to live away from this one. While mid lane, more pressure on Anisha. No power shot, though. Nisha actually has more experience than Vendranger. Yeah. Well, not anymore. God, it, the, the fact that he can just waveform away from this means Topson needs to play it so carefully. Like, can you imagine if you could, like, pump fake power shot, get him to, like, waveform away? Make this really tough. 
but he just has to sort of slowly peck away at this Morphling, which is not going to work out, it feels like, as far as gain a kill, needs another rotation to make it happen. Yeah, I think Morphling's getting way too much out of this lane. Yeah. He basically has the same amount of CS and has, what, eight more denies? Yeah. Morphling's just an insane hero. And he should just play it really, really well. Bottom lane, Zai. It's gotten 20 and 2 versus the 31 and 6 of Ana. Who also has been able to remain without a death as he jumps forward and tries to find this kill on his eye. And guess what? They're going to get it. No Tail lives through it also. And now the chase forward for Puppy. Jarek showing up at the perfect amount of time. And the body block's coming out, but I don't know if it's going to quite be enough. Enchant Totem is available as they connect it onto Puppy here. Gets the punch, gets the chase, gets the kill. Yeah, I love the, oh, the way Ana Isha? is playing. Isha swapping back and forth. Does have another morph, but doesn't use it. He's, whenever they use oh, come on, Paul Rocket on mid, whenever they use battery, he just blinks in onto a hero to share damage from battery assault. Mm. We didn't talk about Seb on the top lane. He has a level 6 right now, Boundless Strike used. Shaker just TP top, 1-1-1 one, one, one build, but... Uh, they need to have another Decrypify and uh, Life Drain to grab a kill on him. Yeah. I takes a crit to his backside and then retreats away. What do we have here? Ops and No-Tail hanging out together. Looks like No-Tail's gonna TP back towards the bottom. And again, a relatively slow paced game, but it's all coming out favoring OG right now. Feeling like they're in the better position. And Puppy getting body blocked in here by these Treants, but they can't wrap around fully. Those early boots on that Jakiro making all the difference. And he gets out of there. Yeah, they set up the lanes correctly. You have Phantom Assassin and Nature's Prophet. Both of these uh, heroes don't really are threatened by Cogs because of the extra units and the Blink Strike. Cogs plus yeah. Battery Assault. Zai. Power shot. Trying to dodge away. Sprout. It's available again if they want to use it. And the chase forward. Zai is going to go down as well. So Thompson making the rotation and getting the kill. Six to one. 2,000 gold lead. They're all over the map. And this is a much different type of OG game than we saw in game number one. And Puppy just TP's back in. Wants to give his life away. As Thompson talking a little bit of trash here and gives him the tip afterwards. Oh, there's oh the goodness. Between Puppy and Dobson. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a true statement. On and out, needs to get the heck out of here, but does not have Blink Strike, gets pushed up onto the high ground. Nisha gets the kill, and Puppy gonna give him the tip back. <laughs> now there is a little bit of history there, isn't there? Yeah, Dobson's uh, chat wheel game is really strong. They have good levels. Uh, gaps are... Level 6, before 10 minute mark with some stacks, uh, has mana boots. Same goes for uh, offlane of OG. Pagna is going to have that Aether Lance, which is going to give them more kill potential. Earthshaker sitting on mana boots already. Well, there is a big rotation coming up to this top lane, though. This puppy has shown up. But it doesn't look like they're capable of doing anything. And the Rocket Flare reveals the positioning. Yapsor spots out Jerex, getting into position for these bounty runes. Boundless Strike. They pull Jerex back in. And Nisha has shown up as well, where they will find that kill. And Thompson actually going to pop ultimate. They go for the Decrep. That actually keeps mid one alive. The Decrep ends up causing the death. And now Thompson also going to go down, although they managed to find that kill on Zai and the Monkey King afterwards with the no-tail ulti. So Topson eventually will fall here, it looks like. Uh, I think, maybe not. Chase, he absurd, does he have any mana? He he's trying to dodge away the creeps, couldn't kill him because of the evasion. But Nisha Sick. finds his finish. Sick RP by Yappy there. And uh, we could see the power of their lineup. Nature's Prophet using ulti, some Fisher play, plus uh, level four power shot, that's ton of a damage. Yeah. So, impressive start there. Um, it does end up looking like Secret come out ahead from that one, obviously. And now taking a look at the net worths, it's still this sort of contingent of OG heroes there at the top, but they haven't really come up with a great answer yet for this Nisha Morphling, who is 
Now up to the four Wraith bands and ready to fight if he needs to. Fissure comes out from Jarek's power shot off the mark. He's gonna start pressuring the tower on mid. Full agi plus uh, catapult. No tail. In a little bit of trouble. And he could wave for him, but Isha wisely is not gonna go for it. That would have been the death of him there with the power shot and obviously the shackle shot afterwards. But it looks like this 2000 gold lead is gonna be continued to be nursed. Hard to use shackle shot if you didn't skill it. That's fair. That's a good point. I always forget his funky builds. A little bit of a different build from Puppy than what we've seen before. He went for the 2 1 2. Yeah, um, that's, that's what I didn't mention. Like, he always goes for Max Ice Path, which I think is a correct build. Uh, maybe a bit too greedy because they wanted to grab some kills. Uh, he was lacking a mana, so went for. Uh, 2-1-2 build. Also, they don't have the best sieging potential, so maybe that's the reason why he put an extra point into Liquid Fire. Yeah. It, it does sort of have the feeling as Nisha gets the kill onto this uh, Nature's Prophet in the meantime. It has that feeling like it's a little bit tough to, to get things done because of that. Like, team fight is going to take a while to come online. Uh, they don't really have that maximum lockdown yet on the lower yeah. the, cooldown. The thing is, Monkey King is shut down in this game. Morphling yeah. is still recovering. Uh, he can be active, but he needs to to play with someone else. Magnus is not that hero. So he needs a blink dagger. Also Clockwork still didn't uh, use his hook shot efficiently. Yeah. We haven't really yeah, seen a, a, a hook shot be used for a kill yet or anything. I don't think we've even seen it used. So I, I added efficiently just in case that he <laughs> used it and I didn't notice, but he definitely didn't use it more than one time. Yeah, that's right. You gotta farm creeps every now and then, you know, get do what you can do with it. Uh they realize yeah, that their lineup is not strong right now. So they they can take a fight, but uh, they would love to farm for the next uh, five, ten minutes with the Empower on both of the cores and uh, get a blink dagger on Mag, which he's getting uh, closer to 800 gold away yeah well and to be honest like if this game lasts another 10 minutes and even if this 4,000 gold lead remains steady i i don't feel good about og's prospects going late game um obviously pa becomes a monster fine uh but you're running with like this wind ranger and against a morphling with the monkey king it just feels really really tough Wind Raider can scale easily, and uh, Seb is having a good time in this game. Okay. Not the best one, but uh, almost has a four staff on top of Ether Lance, so things are looking good. He He's uh, level nine, which means his spells are maxed out. Yeah. Top lane. Bringing in the Nature's Prophet to play with Jerex, who is about a little under halfway to his Blink Dagger. And there is really good vision in this area, kind of defensively placed wards by Secret. It feels like they know that OG are eventually going to want to pressure this top lane. And so they're getting that vision down in the area where they think the fight's going to happen. OG just got rid of uh, two boards from Secret mm. on the bottom side of the map. So they are controlling their own jungle. Yeah. No tail. Does he get found out here? Mid one looking at him, but not gonna be able to go for yeah, it. Yeah, they back out look. the bounties. <laughs> it's scary, man. Very scary. Well, there's a lot of laughing. I don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> there's a lot of laughing, but not a lot of action at the moment. No, no, we're just chilling, man. Ten to six. Nisha gets empowered. Mid one gets empowered. Yaps or cries because he doesn't get in a farm. Although somehow he's still been able to get himself towards arcanes and almost a blink dagger. Whoever gets the blink dagger first on their position four, they're gonna smoke up and try to make something happen. Right now, uh, Mag is gonna grab it in 100 gold. Yeah. Earth Shaker still 800 gold away from it. 
little power shot comes in there. The pressure coming from Thompson and Seb and looking like they're gonna try and finish off this tier one tower. Is it time to go yet? They find themselves one. Mr. Zai in some trouble and another round of the decrep, but they get the kill in spite of it. Power shot as well as the damage coming from Seb. Take it down. So they managed to take down the tier one tower and that is the second or third one rather, excuse me, taken by OG. Yeah. It feels like we have a formula. Whoever gets sent down to dire off lane is just feeding. <laughs> Last yeah. game it was Thompson, now we have Clockwork who is not having a good time. Zero, five, and two. Maybe Radiant is just better. Maybe that's what's the problem. Oh, it definitely is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mid one finds himself no tail. Good decrep, Good keeping his buddy alive. Goes for this four staff too, so no tail lives through it. And the apps are still looking for the chase, but it's not going to be there. They cannot find these heroes. Ana thinking about going back in here. He just wants to farm up. Is that battle fury done? Yeah, we didn't so talk about Ana. He's level thirteen, has that battle fury finish on top of uh, twelve hundred gold. Look at these wards that you have on secret. It's just like a square of vision. It's like, you are not gonna walk in here without us knowing about it. And it's a really small area where they can farm. It's like one, two, three camps. Hookshot used, What? what is that sound? The hell? Excuse me? Oh, we found him. All right, Mr. Seb, he's gonna get ran down. I was not even looking over there. I guess that he was just being a, a tree man, wanting to hang out in the woods for a little bit. Beauty of position five, Nature's Prophet, is he can TP anywhere and place whatever good wards he wants. Look at this, behind tier two tower. Yeah. I think that they had a good idea that, uh, you know, Secret was trying to play on the other side of the map. And... You can see that they keep on sending these treants up here, blocking out the camps too. And basically OG saying, okay, if you want to try and play this turtle farm up game, we're going to make it less efficient for you and keep blocking your camps. Both position fours have a blink dagger and the smoke. You know what time it is? It's go time. Ana, not long for this world. The Apsor is there. They spot him, jump forward, able to catch, and might not even need the RP. Are they going to fully commit for him? The chase forward, the cogs push back, and a dead old PA. And now OG still moving into position, misses the hook shot, but that's okay because they can still chase these heroes down, still have RP with the blink available from the Apsor. Earthshaker does have his as well. Jerex looking for his opening. They could take this fight, but they still don't have that PA. And Seb is just going to die, and the blink dagger reveal does nothing. Nisha destroys him. Man, Nisha was staying one step ahead. Oh no. He, he morphed into PA, goes in with the dagger and the blank strike, forcing him to use the Crypt of Adite, immediately switches to the real morphling and uses adapter strike. So budget shotgun coming into a play. And now Topson trying to jump out of here, but will be found. He TP'd into all of this mess and Secret knew about it and they eventually hunt down the Wind Ranger as well. You said it. As soon as those blink daggers come out in the position fours, they're going to start fighting and OG come out on top in this instance. Zai chasing down No Tail now. Got him caught. Got him oh. controlled. And No Tail going to die. Out. Although, showing up with the rest of them, Seb misses the life drain. It's like No Tail's still going to live through it regardless. So they don't find that kill, and Puppy now is going to be the one that dies instead as they chase him out. Need a dagger, get the vision, let the dagger do the work. And they're gonna lose tier two tower on the bottom because of it. The runes are gonna be traded two for two in this case. But right into the pit. No deso, no minus armor at all right now. It's gonna make this a little bit more difficult, but Thompson is there with his ulti, and that's gonna maybe make the difference. Although they throw out the rocket immediately. They know what's going on. Can they get into position? The yep, Apsor, he's still got the RP. This is actually so deadly. They need to get the hell out of here. They're not taking it quickly enough. OG need to retreat. They can't take this fight if mid one gets into position with the Apsor there as well. Nice. The Echo Slam though, they interrupt Jarek, but the two person RP, it's not enough. Able to turn it back around mid one. The hook shot, it connects on all of them. OG is biting the dust.
dust is starting to fall. Thompson trying to run, but it's to no avail. Four go down. It's the Aegis coming back out in a second. Ana is going to get out of there. They pop back on Morphling, though. That might buy be enough to Morphling. make this worth it. Yeah, buy back on Seb and No Tail. They took the Aegis. They wanted to protect this Phantom Assassin. Basically, it was who gets the better initiation? Who goes first? Jerex with the godlike Echo Slam, but then nice counterplay from yappy three man rp i think hookshot actually connected mid mid air oh. Them while oh, Nisha. he's out of there they got him caught though the turnaround coming yet again and jerex trying to run and he's gonna die mid one with that long range punch and now the chase forward for more og they're only gonna connect one with the ice path but the chase forward with the primal spring and no tail going to get brought down here in a second although no tail now pushed back inside his own trees mid one finds that kill seb trying to take down another this is all falling apart for og in the past couple of minutes although on a jump sword tries to make something else turn it back around and get that kill on a puppy so the final tally is actually going to end up being two for two, and that's a dieback for Nisha. So this actually works out okay. Hook shot there for Zai. He could think about trying to turn now onto Ana. He needs the ultimate play here to make it work, and does have battery assault back up again in a second. Ana gets the blink strike up, and power shot comes through. Oh, Thompson knew where he was at. Pretty plays. Mid one. They're going to find him. Nope, they don't know. Just kidding. He's thinking about... Uh, oh my god. Oh my god, Seb! Seb, don't do it! Oh, man, one definitely thought about it. Oh, man. He had All right, damage, I... but uh, he was afraid that he's gonna die after, so it's really not worth it. He did see the smoke, too. I Who comes out ahead there? Like, Aegis down, it's a dieback from Nisha. I guess Ana lives through all of it? Is that enough? Yeah, Ana's their win condition. And okay. Poppy tanking a lot. The build on Poppy chainmail plus helm, 15 armor on Jakiro. But not enough in the end. And they do have Blink Dagger with RP available from Yapsor, but they found themselves the Monkey King. And Yapsor can't go for the RP play. OG. Just when I was starting to doubt them, pull it back in fabulous fashion. And now they're up 3,000 gold lead again. And yeah, finding more. That fight would have been different if Clockwork had mana to use the combo there. Yeah. Oh my god, what's happening? A Sprout, Deep Crip. Sprout plus Shackle Shot is uh, the old uh, example from the textbook and still working. That's, uh, it's a nice little combo. They can get it. So you do have Blink on Thompson, jumps forward, finds the Shackle, no tails there with the high ground vision. Yapsor still has Blink RP available if they all start to grew up, but they can't they do can anything to turn it. Yeah, nice sentry would place down, but a heads up for staff, or rather skewer, keeps them in play. And the thing you had talked about earlier was this Monkey King not really feeling like he's had a game. He is starting to sort of come online a little bit, but it's Ana that's just so far ahead. Yeah, man, Ana is 5,000 gold ahead, both Morph and uh, and Monkey. Even though they're farming with M power. Oh, a DD Nisha, or rather DD Ana. <laughs> yeah, usually you you see Nisha, who's playing that Phantom Assassin and oh, getting those Oh, and this blur, the vision, the blur. They find him. Oh, it doesn't shackle, though. God. That is one time when the blur can be really good if you can sort of sneak up on the other carry and then obviously come up with a disable, but wasn't able to get it in time. So where, where do you think we're at right now? It's like 5,000 gold lead for OG. Does this feel like it's enough that uh, they're pretty comfortable in the state of the game? Like, can they just sort of steamroll from here or do they still need to play it safe? It's looking good for them because this Phantom Assassin has ton of farm is tanky enough to survive the initial burst and even they even have a four staff on pagna in case something bad happens getting closer to that uh, bkb oh nisha saving his buddy for the moment the ice path follow up and now the full combination comes out wind ranger can heal back up by the pugna but it's to no avail as he eventually does go down nisha still chasing rp only onto one and they pulled seb back into the clutches of the rest of secret yeah really bad time to fight for og Phantom Assassin needed less than 100 gold to get a full BKB, and they still engage into that fight. 
not what you want to have. And it speaks to one of the issues that you've got from OG. It, it, BKB timings for both of these heroes is going to be pretty key, I think. Although you don't really want to have to go for it. And they just blew up No-Tail. Okay. It happens so quickly. Look at No-Tail, what he's doing with, <laughs> with his treants on the top lane. Just trying to buy as much time as possible so they can't go for tier 2s. Mana. The armor corruption misses the ice path. That was ugly. And mid one now trying to turn into a tree, trying to dodge the damage. But Thompson's there, shackles them to another tree. They find the kill. Oh, he should. He I don't even know. Stay hidden under under the Chappie amulet. <laughs> That's probably the way. That's sort of tough to know in that instant if you're going to be able to live or not. But in the end, can't quite get him. Good vision in the area with the clockwork flare and also sentry wards. So on a move in aggressively forward. He still is the big bad boss in this game. And it looks like Windranger had an Aghanim's queued up, but he's now going to go back for the BKB. <laughs> they have to go this for this. This is what we talked about. Like you. You're not the most farmed hero in the game, but you'd need both Aghanim Scepter and BKB and Daedalus. Uh, always need an item. So, such a greedy hero. Yeah. It's fun to play, though. I love this hero. You run around, just punch people over and over again in the laning phase. I miss the Orb of Venom days. Get some D wards. OG chased. <gasps> I was real yeah, close. They found him. Oh, and the four staff with the shackle aggressively played. Really nicely done there by OG. He was in the range of that sentry board, hiding uh, in the shadows. Yeah. That does become more than problematic. There's a DD bottom. We'll see if they maybe want to try and take a fight with that on Nisha. It's going to be here for another two minutes and a hook shot down bottom. They catch themselves. No Tail is able to get the Sprout push himself out of the cogs, but it's not going to matter as mid one takes his claim of the prize. And Nisha has the DD now. It looks like they want to try and take this fight. They need to play around this uh, BKB on PA. Try to lower it down. Find Jerex. Looks like he will die. The fissure comes out from Nisha. Thousand damage morphling. What? <laughs> exactly thousand damage at one point after using that enchant totem. 250 plus 750. Let's see All it. All right, that's 800 Wa plus. Waveform attacks. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. I don't think it works like that anymore. I think it did for a little while, but it's pretty great. Uh, it looks like it's going to be the Manta done in a second for Nisha. Ana, how's he doing on his farm? Going for the MKB afterwards. They don't have any kind of evasion. I mean, maybe he's preparing for evasion if he if Morphling turns into Wind Ranger. Yeah, or himself too. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. It's also attack speed. It's not like the worst thing in the world for Ana. Get those little mini bash procs. Staying one step ahead. All right. I think they call that the next level play. So 22 to 20. This game's significantly closer than we saw in game number one between these two squads. And when I saw these matchups, this was the one I was mainly looking forward to. I think the biggest thing is it's just sort of... Oh, no tail? It won't get him. When I, when I was coming into this game, I was fully prepared to just see Secret completely roll over OG. I think that that's what a lot of people were expecting. Secrets looked amazing. Obviously, they didn't have the best performance at the Major ever, uh, but they still showed up and had a really good series uh, or two in that one. But OG's definitely been struggling, and it, it, this looks like a revitalized team, uh, at yeah, least in this game number two. I think everyone can say that uh, Team Secret is the best uh, European team right now, yeah. without a doubt. And uh, they're not satisfied with their performance at the Major, I can tell you that. Yeah. 
Morphling gonna go back for the E Blade afterward. Took the waveform attacks targets. And 31 minutes in, it's again waiting for that Roche to respawn. 20 seconds until it's up. And the vision battle that's been played around this whole area. You saw that one ward taken out by Puppy. This one just outside of range, it looks like, of both of these sentry wards. As Ana's gonna move forward and should be known by secret that he's there. Puppy with the spell amp talent and dual breath burn damage. He just clears the whole creepway with the dual breath and liquid fire. It's interesting he didn't decide to take the 40 XP gain. He's just playing on a different side of the map. He's going to get himself to, to level 20. Anyway, yeah. get that GPM. But I, I would prefer to have the, the XP gain talent because he would be level 20 by now. And the like ice path duration at yeah. level 25 is insane. Oh. But regardless, it's going to be a smoke up. Roche is back up. Yapsor within vision. They have good vision of OG if they break their smoke on a mid one. Has his BKB available? Ana thinking about jumping here. It's a little bit dangerous though in Yapsor. He'd be a great one to jump on. They go for the initiation, but he's able to get the blink away. Uh, they reveal it for just a second now. The Glimmer Cape keeps alive Puppy. Ana needs to be careful as they chase forward. Already burned through the Aeon Disc. And this fight's not gone the way that OG wanted to start it. But if they can burn off Puppy at the game, this would be a great way to make it happen. So they chase forward for more. Jakiro buys back into the game. Now the chase up onto the high ground. Todson completely left alone. They dropped down the Sentry Ward in the duration of the BKB. Can they chase him down and kill him off in time? Chasing forward. Nisha able to get the blink away. Thompson lives. Everybody living with the exception of Puppy. You did have to buy back. And now Ana gets the BKB. Tries to run away. Mid one drops his ultimate as well. And now decides to turn. This extra armor. It's not doing enough in the RP. They're controlling him. They're starting to take down Ana. Can they fully kill him off in time? He's still living through it somehow. But it's not going to be enough. In the end, he does does die 80 seconds on the sideline as Jarek's also going to be under fire they find that kill too and it looks like they'll get out alone there like he was basically playing one versus five and this is a uh, free Roche this is cheese and ages nicely done by Yapser there just walking in because blink dagger was on cooldown using RP in Wukong's command this, yeah, it, it, this, it felt like they got so separated when that first initiation sort of was botched. Yeah, and let me tell you a story about the best players in the world, Clockwork. He realizes that he's not going for any kind of Aghanim Scepter builds. He can't kill, solo kill anyone anymore because how this game went at the early stages. So he just buys a casual medallion for extra armor against the, against BA, against the Wind Range. Then he gets a Glimmer Cape. He got so much value out of this glimmer. Yeah. It's uh, it's definitely feeling like he's, you know, just that utility hero. And not in the way before where it was sort of just like you pick up a Vlad, you pick up a Crimson Guard. It's these active items to make sure that people can live through it. And that glimmer cape to keep Puppy alive through that first salvo of initiation. Like if they blow up Puppy right there or if they catch Yapsor, that blink away. Um... The fight's basically over at that point, and yeah. it's yeah, Roche for OG. is not going to hesitate. If he sees Phantom Assassin, he's going to solo RP her before BKB. If she has a BKB, he's going to hesitate a little bit, unless it's in Wukong's <clears throat> command or if she has one, two seconds left. Yeah. And now you have this AC done for mid one. Nisha has the Aegis. This is a tough fight. OG looking like they still want to take it in spite of that, and Vision is here. Zai has the hook shot available as they're moving forward, trying to find him, but the walk away, the hook now connects onto this Keep Seb Pugna for staff. Need to get out of here. They have BKB on a couple of different cores. They break down the tree. Mid one, he's completely isolated. Can they blow him up in time? No, they're just going to try and get out. They don't want to try and take this fight in spite of the potential good initiation that came there. So Seb, he's going to be the sacrificial lamb while the rest of OG retreat. Good power shot, but they can't really fight into Aegis and Cheese right now. Yeah. Phantom Assassin getting closer to level 25. We'll see what he decides to go for. Triple Dagger or Coup de Gras percentage. And this game becomes so much more difficult now, too. That AC online for the Monkey King. You can't burst him off the Ana as quickly. Like, who do you even go on with this PA? Nobody's an easy kill. They're just building armor. I already yeah. mentioned Jakiro, medallion plus a casual helm. 
to keep himself alive. Now he bought a gem for his team. They want to get rid of the vision. Solar Crest on Clockwork. This is how they play whenever they are facing heavy right click heroes. Yeah. Smart. Very, very smart. I think during the major, uh, Poppy on a bat and had two chain mails. Just get two <laughs> casual chain mails. Armor's good. Armor's OP. Uh, no Tail was able to deny a DD rune that was sitting in the river. So that takes it away from Nisha, which could have maybe been an opportunity for Secret to just go. Just go. Anna. Just go. Just, just run in there, guys. Make it happen. Zaya's like just parked on this ward waiting for somebody to TPN. Oh, look at this treant down here. It's just going to munch away at it. <laughs> Takes a little while. A little bit of time. It's going. Take it out. Oh, I got him. It's a happy tree. Happy tree friends. That's right. Oh, God. That freaking <laughs> looks. Jesus. Please, no. <laughs> All right. Anna's up on the high ground. No tail is trying to get some split push work in mid lane. And he's going to be able to do that at least somewhat. While the E-Blade goes out onto PA, we'll be healed back up afterwards. Does Clockwork have the Rocket Flare damage yet? No, oh, it's at uh, 20. It's a good way to deal with the... Rocket Flare push. through sight. What up? <laughs> it's the best, right? Don't you love it? <laughs> I mean, maybe... Against Wind Ranger, she has level 20 talent, grants invisibility. They have, uh, they don't have it. Never mind. It's pretty garbage. I mean, they have a gem. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just trying to find something positive in that talent. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't. I'm with you. Got to find that positivity in the midst of it. Mid one just dodged the Wrath of Nature, too. What a player. So Nisha, E-Blade, Scotty, Manta is about two-thirds of the way to the BKB afterwards on top of his Aegis. They still have no time on this uh, Roche here. This is going to expire right now. This is maybe their moment. Zai moving into position. Everybody blinks away. OG still living. Seb throw. Whoa. Okay. They hook shot up and they go for no tail instead. <laughs> I thought he right. misclicked because I was holding my camera <laughs> to the bottom whether he wants to hook on Pugna or Earthshaker. Yeah, I wasn't sure there. He went for neither of them. This is what I want to see. Phantom Assassin didn't go for Basher. I mean, just the Basher and has a straight Divine Rapier queued up. They they need damage. They need to risk to win this game. Yep. Seb, in the meantime, is going to get hit here by the Ice Path and... His Aeon Disc has already procced mid one. They can't break the tree this time. Need to run away and decrep the walk out of here. Looks like Seb will live for the, the moment. Oh, the Apsor looking for his finish. Gets the RP, pulls them both back in, and that is also going to be the Earthshaker under fire. And Jerex Echo Slam, he just walked in and did it. There's no follow up though afterwards. Tops and PKBs and tries to run away. Ana jumps in aggressively, and now he doesn't have a way to get out of this one. BKB turning to fight, see what he can do. It's not going to be enough. Nisha's good there as shackle. well. A good shackle shot to try and turn this. They need to get the hell out of here. Good Too shackle, much damage no coming from Nisha. Good blink away. They use yeah. the buyback on Jerex. He popped that echo slam, but uh, nothing good came out of it. Again, it feels like OG is always outnumbered. Their positioning in both of these games have not been great. Yeah. Looks like Nisha's gonna go for a satanic afterwards. Shackle shot catching. Can they He's kill him off in time? He's switching over. Morphin to others form, but are they gonna be able to burst him? The stack, they get it killed. All right, mid one also reveals himself. Bold as brass. And gonna be chased. Shackle, it connects. Mid one, what's going on, baby? He's gonna get caught. He's also gonna go down. The feed is real as they just lose their two cores. What? 70 seconds without Morph, a minute and a half without Monkey King. Okay, Morph has a buyback. Monkey King does not. He needs uh, 
127 gold. How we'll do pick they up some find bounties. that gold? Jokiro is uh, level 22, four staff, has macro power, so it's gonna be hard to push into. I mean, they have catapults though. It's double range creep, and the apps are getting very close to problematic and, and maybe even dead. He's gonna get the four staff pull away, but they forced the buyback from Nisha. That, that's a win. I don't think he needed to buy back there. They could have stalled with Rocket Flare, with the uh, with Shockwave and Jakiro. Well, do we have a game on our hands, Lacoste? It was starting to feel like it was going to be a runaway from Secret, but those two deaths suddenly turn it pretty heavily back towards OG. I don't know about you, Gabe, but I've been watching this game for 40 minutes. I don't know what, what you've been doing. Uh -huh. do, do we have a game? <laughs> God damn it, Lacoste. <laughs> Man, are you even getting paid for this? <laughs> no, definitely not. I'm taking not. your share. I don't care. I'm <laughs> taking your share. <laughs> Unbelievable. What a guy. Nisha? Oh, can't afford to die, buddy. Tops and backs out. And it does feel like they still have this, like, big ability to turn the fight back around with a Yapsor ultimate. Zai. Glimmer Cape walk in underneath the Pugna Ward, though, makes it a lot harder to fight. But one big RP could certainly completely turn this back around. The other thing is that you could hypothetically just, you know, oh, if you get a big RP and power Nisha, he turns into PA and they all blow up. Hypothetically, you can do anything. I could play professional again, <laughs> hypothetically. There's a world in which that happens. <laughs> Yeah, it's called Wet Dreams. Oh my god, what are you doing? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> oh, Lacoste. Crazy guy. Jarek says sorry for you. Amazing. All right, Shackles Puppy's got his been on point. Yeah. yeah. Shackles have been on point, getting closer to level 25 with the cooldown reduction talent. That, that's one of the yummiest uh, level 25s. Yeah. He's also almost got that Aghanims. What else do we have online here? The puppy Jakiro would probably now have level 25 if he had taken the XP gain, but does just have the GPM talent, which is still very good. Um, and if he can manage to get 25 before the next fight, could be really relevant. It's going to be Aegis done, though, and OG run right, right in. The last Rocket Flare was used up in the top lane, so Secret might not be fully aware that this is happening. Looked like it was a relatively Roche for middle of the road, and this is huge. Roche going in their favor. The quick Roche spawn means that they get it. And now a Refresher Shard left on the ground for Jerex. This is... Now we have a game. Potentially, potentially game defining. Yapsor though, under the shadow blade. God, this is deadly. Yeah, they don't want to go right into it. They realize that they kind of need to wait out this strong period for OG. They gave refresher shard to Phantom Assassin. She even has a BKB in the backpack. So basically, okay. two BKBs, two abyssal blades, two battle furies to cut down the Monkey King trees. Next level. <laughs> PA clears through that creep wave. The pings are there. They realize what's happening. Bottom lane, it's going to be a split push game coming out from Zai and Nisha. As this game goes on, I, I feel like we so often get these like funky, weird talents that can kind of change the game. Do you feel like one side feels more comfortable going into the late game in this one? It's gonna be hard to kill this wind range right now. She doesn't deal that much damage, but once she gets a next item, uh, then it's gonna be a problem. And this yeah. Phantom Assassin, she's uh, she's six slotted. She could uh, swap uh, power threads and get that butterfly. Uh, I like the idea of getting that uh, divine raper at the point where game was at, but uh, he doesn't need to go for it anymore. Shackle not gonna connect. Dangerous pew, mid pew, one. Pew. Ana gets the blur broken. That means they know that 
There are heroes up on the high ground. Ana trying to bait this out with the Aegis. He feels comfortable standing in the middle of the creep wave, but Yapsor also there. Do they have any sentry wards down? They don't. Yapsor, with that gem, they were able to spot him very briefly. Topson revealing his position, but Yapsor gets the blink away. And with this Pugna continuing to blast away, they use the fortification even to try and take these ones out. But there's the hook shot. No, the shackle shot, rather. They catch on to the Monkey King. They can't take him down, though. So they back out. Uh, he just wants to do that, yeah. Uh, boundless Strike to pop that Eon Disc. And now we've got two waveforms from Nisha. Level 25 for him. Any other ones that have come up recently? Puppies, level 24. Ice Pad Duration, that's extremely good. Monkey King is level 25, one Moon Kong's Command Ring. Uh, is there any thoughts about going for the Ice Path Pierce's BKB? Oh god. Hold on. Yapsor gets stunned. Shackle, not gonna land, but they're still able to find it in the Echo Slam to follow it up afterwards. They try and take him down and they will be able to get the RP off, but it's not good enough. He had buyback. He could have just jumped back into that one. And it does look like with the RP already down, it makes this fight a lot harder to take. You can go for the pullback in onto Ana and oh. just blow him up. He did not Nisha. have enough time to actually pop that BKB. If not enough time after he died to put the back Black King bar from the backpack into his inventory. 0 0.1 second. And everybody else left. There just wasn't an opportunity there. So they lose the Aegis. They still have Refresher, um, and they should have Cheese somewhere as well, I think. I don't think I saw a Cheese used. Yeah. Looks like Earthshaker still has it, but they don't have buyback right now on Jerax. They're going to buy back on one, Nisha. It's unable to land there, and the Dagon to force them back yet again. Nisha's still hanging on to those two waveforms, and this building just drops so quickly. Manta style, pop forward, take down the tier three. Shrines are open. Where are they going to find their shackle landing? Can they hit it onto anybody? Mid one, connects onto both of them. They buy back on two. They bought back on the PA as well. Can they blow them up in time? The hex is there as well. They bought it onto no tail, but mid one. Jeez. Also under control. Ana jumps in. There's the cheese. It ends up popping. They still got him under control. Trying to get the life steal. The boundless strike. It's not quite enough. Is it going to be there? No. Thompson still lived through all of it. And now they've got their eyes set on another. It's Zai, who's going to be found and going to be killed. But it Zai, costs them a lot. Zai does not have a buyback, but Monkey King does. 70 gold for Zai. Until they reach the base, he's going to have it. Man, Thompson has showed up in this game. His shackles have been on point. Yeah. With the build that Monkey King uh, went for, the Abyssal Blade, just to... The only threat is this Phantom Assassin going off in a team fight. And if he can use ulti and just keep her in the ulti after the bkb is down that's that's how you win a game yeah and now nisha needs that mkb he needs to counter the evasion because he's missing a lot of hits well and we do also have that ice path finally done for Shakiro, which makes such a huge difference in these fights it's such a long disable and such a short cooldown 3.75 seconds on a nine second cooldown Meanwhile, Seb. Puppy with the plate mail. 31 armor on the Jakiro. Everyone's just getting <laughs> armor items. But Lotus, it can make a big difference in these fights. I think probably... I guess the Wind Ranger one is pretty interesting. Like, if you focus fire the Morphling and he gets a Lotus Orb on him... be pretty cool it's good against hex it goes good against shackle yeah in the meantime no tail has decided to go back for the necro books afterwards so does have level two right now for that cooldown reduction and we'll be able to pick up these bounty runes along the way as well this cooldown on teleportation is so low already just 15 seconds but it is that Lotus Orb done for the Jakiro, and then the Shadow Blade also finished for the Earthshaker. Yeah, they have two Lotus Orbs. One on Puppy, one on Yapsor. If they use it correctly, it could win them a team fight. Windranger now has this uh, Crystallis, who has a gem. Yapsor. Oh, 
Anna's there. Thompson also. They use the focus fire trying to take down mid one. He thinks about going for the ultimate. Yapsor is there also in the shadow blade. Nisha chasing forward with the blur. It's going to get dispelled in a second. Jarek spots him out. Backing away. Can't afford to get caught now. Meanwhile, top lane. The Nature's Prophet is going to keep this pressure onto that top tier three tower. They want to oh. take this fight right now. BKB on cooldown for 50 seconds on Phantom Assassin. She immediately swaps Refresher Shard just to have a BKB if something happens. Yeah. Heads up play there. And in the meantime, Thompson's going to get this pressure out as well. So they're putting Nisha up on the high ground down here bottom while top lane is pushing in. You can't afford to take this fight for too long if you're secret, but likewise, if you're able to find a kill right at the start, you can potentially just win the game. Buyback status for a lot of these heroes is on cooldown. Chase forward for more. There's the Decrep and the Dagon. The Shackle connects as well. Glimmer Cape going to wear out soon. Power Shot comes out. They throw out another one of those Lotus Orbs. Dagger's going back and forth, but as I said, that Tier 3 tower gets taken down by the Necro Books and the Treants, and now they're trying to chase for more. Jerex does find one. Nisha to turn it back around. Tries to take it in, but they're going to be able to find the Shackle Shot. And now the turn run. Can they kill off Nisha? No, BKB popped. And now is going to try and take down Thompson. The big jump in coming from Ana. The way for him up to the high ground. Seb still lives through this one. He needs to find a batch or a couple of them, if at all possible. And they're able to out. find it. There's going to be the Abyssal Blade used. Controlling him fully. Can they take him down? They take down this Nisha. Morphling. And now Yaps are also trying to run in. They're still living on Ana. He has a blink strike in a second, but they use the RP. Trying to interrupt this one can they do it no they lose the pa they lose the pugna and it looks like og are going to lose this game unless there's a miracle coming from Thompson. but he's in play for this team and this one is looking just about over yeah that this looks like a game because phantom assassin does not have a buyback for three minutes and 22 seconds they could just go for tier fours and they're gonna Dot their eyes across their T's and just go straight for it. Shackle, not gonna land. Thompson, BKB popped. They just used the E-Blade and it's all over. GG is called a secret. Take it 2-0 over OG. Really good performance by Team Secret. I, I gotta say OG looking uh, way better than what they looked uh, a month ago. Since they added Ana, it feels like a different team.